call myself a cultural Christian. Or, or have I a have conversation, done. perhaps, with William Lane Craig? I, I feel such contempt for him. The God Delusion is a very unsophisticated book, intellectually. It's a new atheist movement. Made claims that were self-confessedly wrong. So this, this is atheism in a nutshell. You say, um, uh, there's a God. I say, can you prove that? You say no. I say, I don't believe you then. I think there are a good number of things that cannot be scientifically proven, but that we're all rational to accept. Let me list, let me list five. Our culture has been drunk on the fumes of the new atheist movement for decades now. This has led so many people, myself included, to reject God, reject Christianity, and engage in hedonistic self-aggrandizement on the Enlightenment dance floor. But now, the come down has set in. The sun is rising to illuminate the disoriented masses and people are leaving the party. In this video, we're gonna have a look at a few very important cases of this. And I'm gonna give my own unfiltered perspective on what I think is really happening here. So to start, you may have seen that Richard Dawkins has been doing the rounds recently and going viral for his claim that he is a cultural Christian. Let's check that out. I do think that we we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer, but there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols, and um, I I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Uh, it's true that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down, uh, and I, I'm happy with that. But I would not be happy if, um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, so I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I think it would matter if we... Certainly, if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. Now, for a guy who has turned more people away from God than probably anybody else on Earth over the past few decades, that's quite the claim to make. He wants to have all of the Christmas carols, all of the fine architecture, all of the civilization that Christianity brings, but none of the faith. He wants to bask in the glory of God's creations, whilst not only not giving thanks and praise to the Creator, but whilst mocking Him. But now... The chickens have come home to roost. Look at all those chickens! As he marches slowly toward the grave, whether he admits it or not, he is realizing that his life's greatest achievements through the New Atheist Movement and through his book, The God Delusion and others, have been in no small part responsible for the downfall of the civilization that he claims to love so much. The New Atheist Movement has paved the way for new religions to come about, such as wokeism, DEI. First time in the airline's 96 years, everyone involved, from the ramp to the gate, in the cockpit, and in the cabin, are all black women. Climate change, astrology, Marxism, and well, Atheism. Today, the Sunday Assembly, or as it's better known, the Atheist Church, is launching 35 new services in cities across the world. Nature's way of receiving you. It's nature's way of retrieving you. It's nature's way of telling you something's wrong. The central idea we need to spread is that we have only one life, which means that that life has to be lived to the fullest. There is no second chance, no opportunity to have a do-over. There is no afterlife in which wrongs are righted and cosmic justice meted out to the evil world. And if you guys would like to learn more about the downfall of our culture and how that is directly correlated with the downfall of Christianity and the rise of atheism, I would point you to a brilliant video done a few days ago by David Wood at Apologetics Roadshow YouTube channel. He goes into much greater detail than I would be capable of going into, so check that out and I'll leave the link below. Furthermore, another big red flag with Dawkins is that he refuses to debate the GOAT, William Lane Craig. Who's the most formidable debate opponent that you have had in your career that you can think of now uh, on this question of God's existence? I don't think there are any. <laughs> um, I don't think that there are any very good arguments. Uh, people like William Craig, um, I've, I've no time for him. I mean, he's, he, he, he's got this sort of loud, uh, rather pompous voice and, and, and 
he says that's a premise one, deduction two, and things like that. And and the audience, <laughs> I suppose, is supposed to be impressed. I, <laughs> I've had I've had uh, William Lane Craig twice on on my podcast, and I always had a good experience with him. Having said that, I didn't debate him. I don't know what that would be like. It, it, something you're not interested in doing, debating William Lane Craig. Guys, just before we continue this on, if you're enjoying this clip and if you like seeing me go into these rather difficult topics, then make sure to chuck a like on the video and also subscribe to the channel. Back to it. Or, or have well, a conversation have done, perhaps with William Lane Craig? I, I have done. Um, I, I vowed not to. I, I, I I feel such contempt for him because of his. I don't know whether you've seen his what he says, says about the something about Israelites slaughtering the Midianites, and, and, and instead of saying what any decent theologian would say, well, it never happened, um, uh, and it was, this is just an you know, Old Testament story. Um, he says, um, well, the Midianites had it coming uh, because they were so sinful, and then. Um, uh, if you worry about the Midianite children who had their brains beaten out of them, um, well, that's okay because they went straight to heaven, and and that that finished him, him him off as far as I was concerned. Now, um, for me, I actually wrote a, a, a piece in the in the Guardian saying why I will I will never have anything to do with him. I can see why you you might sort of look at something like that and say that's a, that's an evil thing to think, that's an evil thing to say. I don't want to debate this person. Uh, a few moments ago, you told me that the idea of the New Testament in general about you know being born yes. in sin and needing yeah. salvation is an evil idea. Yes. And yet, that's an idea that many of the opponents that you have spoken to will have believed. They, they believe yes. evil things too. So, so why particularly yes, with William a, Lane it's, Craig? It's, do you it's have a fair point. Um, I, I think the, the thing is that um, the Christian theologians who, who take this seriously um, is are uh, honestly well-meaning. I mean, they 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 believe in the God of Love. They believe they believe in Jesus as the as the as the Son of God of Love, and so on. Um, I think the the sheer well, they 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 would never have defended the slaughter of the Midianites and the Jebusites and things in the Book of Joshua. Um, uh, as somehow justified because because the Midianites were, were sinful. Um, um, it, it's, I think it's an order of magnitude worse th there. Now that obviously doesn't make sense. And Alex O'Connor, who's my favorite atheist to watch because I think that he always engages with good faith and he's always looking to learn. Alex had to go and debate William Lane Craig on this matter for Richard Dawkins because let's just call a spade a spade. Richard Dawkins knows that William Lane Craig would dismantle his worldview with ease. I would like to come back to an earlier point, if Please. I may, too, and that is the notion that atheists are somehow the intelligentsia among us and so forth. I think this is just completely false. The spate of new books published by the new atheists like Harris and Hitchens and Dawkins and so forth are not sophisticated books intellectually. These are, for the most part, angry, uh, bitter, diatribes against religion and while someone like Dawkins may be a good scientist in his field when he begins to talk about philosophy and theology he is merely a layman and the God delusion is a very unsophisticated book intellectually as a philosopher I, I was just appalled at the arguments he gives in that book uh, it is an embarrassment really I think now even Douglas Murray who we've covered many times on this channel who has called himself a Christian atheist in the past or I have heard you describe yourself I don't want to miss as a, a, a Christian atheist or an atheist Christian do yes. I have that right yeah what does that mean well it means I'm not a believer uh, in God or at least I find it very hard to believe in God I'd say maybe agnostic is better uh, but obviously I'm a Christian because I was born in a Christian civilization in a Christian country and brought up a Christian fully acknowledges that Christianity and the Christian values are the bedrock of our civilization and without it everything falls apart born and brought up a Christian uh, as a believing Christian from I think most of my life including through my adult life uh, and I'm now in the um, I suppose the self-confessedly um, conflicted, complex situation of being, among other things, um, uh, an uncomfortable uh, um, agnostic um, who recognizes the values and the virtues that the Christian faith has brought. 
um, I think I, I sort of laid out how I think our civilization, our culture has got to the stage that it is at the moment and its current uncomfortable relationship with faith. I tried to lay that out in The Strange Death of Europe. I, 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 I still um, believe what I wrote there was, was accurate as a diagnosis of the era. Um, but it, it's, uh, and it's a very uncomfortable, as I say, position that some like me is in because I say, you know, you, you, there has been a period of rejection of, of, of faith, particularly from uh, what in our lifetimes has been known as the new atheist movement, uh, uh, which uh, made claims that were self-confessedly uh, um, wrong. That, for instance, um, actually, I think as a late friend of both Tom Wright's and mine, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs once said, uh, you know, that the claim that, for instance, morality was obvious was was obviously wrong. Um, the claim that that basic ethics that, that we might share um, are self-evident is self-evidently not the case. Uh, one doesn't have to be an ethicist to know that. You just need to travel. Um, you just need to read, uh, look, and listen, and to know that's the case. So um, there has, in my view, I think we spoke about this before, Justin, that there has, in my view, been a, a, an interesting movement in recent years, which uh, I think Tom Holland, who you mentioned earlier, is certainly an example of people saying, actually, if, if we go back and look at this, uh, uh, what we have and what we like does does have roots in this mm. uh, in the Christian story. Um, now, the, the follow-on question from there, I suppose, is um, well, what do we do about it? And I think that a great uh, a great failing of our time has been the tendency to talk past each other on this. The religious tend to say, well, <laughs> it's easy; you just have to believe <laughs> if you if you. Uh, recognize these virtues and values, then uh, then believe, and uh, doesn't take into uh, account the fact that very many people today it is it is harder than that. You see, Douglas is able to totally grasp and comprehend the necessity of the church, but like so many others, he struggles with faith. Now, my hope is that Douglas Murray does come around, but the problem is, and it's something that I struggle with every day, and like so many others. When you do try and live a Christian life, you have to make a lot of worldly sacrifices. You see, everybody has their cross to bear and everybody has to contend with their fallen nature and Douglas Murray is no different. And that is a very difficult thing to reconcile. And that's why it's so much easier to say something like you're a Christian atheist or you're a cultural Christian and you can take all of the things that you like about Christianity, but you can still have an off-road. But unfortunately, that doesn't really work because we can't reap the rewards of Christianity. We can't have all the byproducts of Christianity without the stories, without the miracles, without the transcendent, and without the belief in God. And one of my greatest influences, Joe Rogan, has started to come to a similar conclusion. I started listening to him, I think I was introduced to him in around 2012. This was back when he was still a staunch atheist, and I used to agree with him about all of this stuff. It, it lets them experience all the benefits of, of, of being a positive person and being a giving and loving person. You know, we all experience those benefits. You know, it's just they're, they're teaching them to do it in the, 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 the way that it's, it's uh, transcribing the wishes of some holy master who created you. And I said it once, I'm not f***ing saying it again, write it down, this is what you do, do it or else you go to hell. It's like, it's almost like it's structured to make the idiots like have a really simple moral path. Like, it gives you a nice little story to explain the really weird but real complexities of love and positive thinking and, and how it, it shapes lives and how your intention shapes lives and your imagination shapes your life and how this thing is malleable and it's, it's not understood. This life that we're living is simply not understood. I think the majority of religious people probably benefit from it in a sense of like community, for sure. You know, churches are a big part of neighborhoods and communities. You know, it's a big part of how people interact with each other. We've moved past Satan, yeah. but we haven't moved past, past God. Past God, exactly right. Yeah. yeah, or the idea of God. Even the, I mean, if there is some all-knowing entity that is controlling everything and, and is filled with love and has a grand plan for the universe, they have yet to show themselves. God has yet to show himself. Okay, well, we'll get to that bit shortly. But the thing is, I used to think exactly like this because I was and still largely am uneducated on the matter. But I do believe that God puts things in your way, as has happened to me 
too many times to deny over the past few years. And Rogan keeps on getting confronted with Christians recently, from Hulk Hogan to Stephen Meyer to Jordan Peterson explaining to him the stories and the profundity of the stories in the Bible and more. We need to, we need Jesus. <laughs> I think for real. Like, if he came back now, it'd be great. Like, Jesus, if you're thinking about coming back right now, now's a good time. Yeah. Me personally, I don't think that this is a coincidence. Joe Rogan is a cultural barometer and he has more influence on our culture than just about anybody. So, the fact that he is coming around to these realizations for me is indicative of a much larger shift in consciousness that we are seeing. Ayan Hirsi Ali is another one who was a Muslim then became an atheist, was a part of the new atheist movement, and has now come around to being a Christian. No one can presume to be all powerful. And it's very arrogant to assume that you can change human beings to fit into all sorts of modules. Therefore, you accept that there is a power transcendent above us. And that idea that there is something above us, a higher power, I think that that is rooted in Christianity, it's rooted in the Judeo-Christian traditions, and in many ways, it is superior to the nihilistic Nietzsche type um, atheistic theology. The God I grew up with, that was the story that I grew up with. I rebelled against that. And then when I uh, was bold enough to say, and this was in the Netherlands, um, I, I don't want any of that. I didn't convert to Christianity. I didn't convert to another religion or another God. I carried with me this idea, uh, the, you know, the three letter word of God stands just for evil. And my best friends became Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens and Richard Dawkins. These are people I still love and adore. Um, and I think over time, I'm now 53, and so when I made this, when I was in this state of rebellion, it started for me when I was 32 years old. Over time, I've come to realize, and I wish Christopher was alive today mm -hmm. to comment on what we are going through, was we were actually having a conversation about, in my view, the wrong conversation. Does God exist? You know, it was the world built in six days. Uh, do we believe in fairy tales? And that was the wrong conversation to have. The right conversation to have, as I said earlier, was to compare what we as human beings, the transcendent that we have imagined and developed over centuries. I too really do wish that Christopher Hitchens was still around. Not just because he's an amazing writer, not just because I would love to see him lambasting the modern political correctness as he used to do, but because I would be fascinated to see how his thoughts on Christianity would have progressed. And I won't speculate on what I think a dead man may think if he were still alive, but perhaps like his brother Peter Hitchens, he would have come around to Christianity. Who knows? Another of the atheist icons that's been exposed is the woke oracle, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Do you believe in God? Me? I, the so, creator? Uh, yeah, so I'm, the, the more I look at the universe, um, just the less convinced I am that there is something benevolent going on. So if you, if, if your concept of a creator is someone who's all powerful and all good, that's not an uncommon pairing of powers that you might describe to a creator. All powerful and all good. And I look at disasters that afflict Earth and life on Earth. Volcanoes, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, disease, pestilence, um, congenital birth defects. You look at this list of ways that life is made miserable on Earth by natural causes. And I just ask, how do you deal with that? So philosophers rose up and said, if there is a God, God is either not all powerful or not all good. I have no problems if as we probe the origins of things, we bump up into the bearded man. If that shows up, we're good to go, okay? Not a problem. There's just no evidence of it. And this is why religions are called faiths, collectively because you believe something in the absence of evidence. Ironically, Mr. Scientific Evidence over here is the one who has been claiming and shouting from the rooftops for that matter, that he can't tell 
that a man is a man and a woman is a woman by just looking at them. And that chromosomes and genitalia are insufficient. The XXXY chromosomes are insufficient. Now more of a pop culture stance, but even Logan Paul made the mistake of mocking God. Might as well you are mean to me about my in. Lord and Savior. But I'll have everybody know, I don't bring this up. Mike, back me on this. Does he not bring it up more than I do? And, okay, and, I, so, and I'll say this so, again. So, At the end of the day, I don't know Okay, so and I'm my not question saying is one this. thing or another. I just am definitely questioning why we have to perpetuate a belief that is f I, silly. I, I agree, but you bashing me in front of a group of people for my beliefs is not right. And, I, and I'm not trying to like be a, a dramatic person right now, but genuinely, like I know people that hate me, that treat me better about my faith than you, and you're my best friend. If you notice... I never ever question anybody's beliefs or push them to believe in Jesus. I express my love. And if you express your higher power, I'm all ears. Give an example of what, what one you're that saying. really hurt me is you told me I need a therapist because I believe in Jesus. No, that I one hurt me. No, I didn't. I said you need a therapist because Jesus isn't quite doing it for you. No, you which didn't. is no, which you is true. No, you didn't. I, said, and I, I don't want to stand down. No, you didn't. You, you think, said you think I said nah, you need not a therapist because you believe in Jesus. I checked you Jesus? and I said, What did you just say to me? And you said, what did I say? And you stumbled. And you're like, I don't know. What would I say? I, no, and then no, no, you no. fumbled. And I'm not backing it is, down from It this. is common knowledge that you don't interpret reality like reality happens. Mm -hmm. And you heard that incredibly wrong. You think so I said what you do need I need a therapist because you believe in Jesus? What do I need a therapist for then? Jesus isn't it doing it for you. And for, I, for I believe what do I need a therapist for? I don't believe you're as emotionally mature as you could be. Then what do I need Jesus for? I mean, uh, what do I need a therapist for? To get you to level up. And then this happened. I made some pretty uh he's gonna go pretty cry. out of he's line go comments cry. to George about George's beliefs. And I said, uh I, I'm not gonna say what I said. I'm not even going there again because I'll tell you why. The following three weeks have been the hardest period of my fucking life. Buddy, God kicked me in the dick as hard. As he fucking could, there, there is, there, it's soon we call it that started a happening. God smack. <laughs> I you went, got I went, God smack. I went, son. there's no way, there's no way. We started off in, uh, in Qatar. I got, I got violent food poisoning. Oh, before that, camera taken away at the airport. Oh, yeah, yeah. Immediately. Yeah. $20,000 camera landing. taken. We, we were invited by Qatar. We landed Qatar, camera stripped from us. <laughs> all, right, all right, fire, fire. $20,000 camera. All right, no problem, no problem. No problem. What you got? Get, get to, get, yeah. we, got, we got it back a couple days later, but we get back, get, get to my hotel. Uh, you know, think, it's, it's just little things here and there. Things aren't showing up. Uh, uh, we misscheduled. Um, I, again, got violent fucking food poisoning. Next day, got alcohol poisoning. Um, uh, 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 our luggage was delayed, so we, we had no clothes to get to our events. Um, Qatar was the first time I felt the wrath of God. Since this little saga, George Jenko has gone on to become more and more convicted and strong in his beliefs and his career is going from strength to strength. And another one that I used to love listening to about God was Ricky Gervais. I thought his stand-up bits about God and about religion were so hilarious and did such a good job of pointing out the absurdity of religion. And by the way, I still do love Ricky Gervais. I think that he's a brilliant, genius, creative comedian. But after doing my own research, I look at his takes on religion very differently. Let's analyze a clip of Ricky Gervais being pushed by Stephen Colbert, of all people. You want to debate the existence of sure. God? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Ricky Gervais, is it, why is there something instead of nothing? I, that's, that's, that makes no sense you at all. You have to that's, answer that's my not, question. That's not the two choices. No, There's but it's the two... choices I'm giving you, I'm the host. Well, I don't... <laughs> you, uh, you want to concede the debate? Why is there something this, instead this... of nothing? Hold on. Yes. Uh, what do you mean, out of nothing? What do you, do you... Why is there something instead of why is there nothing? Why, why does the universe exist at all? Why but, is there something? But surely the big question is not why, but how. Well, why is it irrelevant? Isn't okay, it? fine. How, how is there something? Because you think of God as the prime mover. How is there anything? Oh, well, I instead don't. Of nothing? I don't. This is this is a, a ridiculous. Is there a premise. prime mover? If, if is you, there a, is if, there a demiurge that started everything? Well, outside science and nature, I don't believe so. Because the, the interesting thing is, th this is the thing, right? So, I, I'm an agnostic atheist, technically. Ag agnost ag agnostics um, mean it means. No one knows whether there's a God. So everyone's technically ag agnostic. We don't know. That's true, so that's true. an agnostic atheist is someone who doesn't know there's a God or not. 
as no one does. That actually doesn't make sense. Atheism is a belief system. Atheism, like he said, is the rejection of a claim that there is a God. The word atheism is atheism. When you put a in front of something, the A negates what comes next. Atheism means without God. Moreover, the word Gnostic comes from the Greek word gnosis, meaning to have knowledge. A Gnostic or agnostic means without knowledge. If you're an agnostic, it means you're without the knowledge of whether or not God exists. But if you're saying that you're an atheist, you're denying that there is a God, an unmoved mover, an uncaused creator. And if you make that argument, you then have to come up with an intelligible reason as to why. And that's when you start to create a worldview, as has happened with the atheist movement. You can't just say because we can't see God and because science, because first of all, science and religion are not incompatible. And second of all, there are a lot of things that can't be explained by science that you take for granted every day. As William Lane Craig points out, that there is no need for a God. I mean, everything in the world can be understood without needing to invoke a God. You have to accept that that is one possible view to take about the world. Sure, that's possible. The okay. But um, do you deny that science cannot account for everything? Yes, I do deny that science So what can't it account for? Well, I, had you brought that up in the debate, I had a number of examples that I was going to give. Uh, I think there are a good number of things that cannot be scientifically proven, but that we're all rational to accept. Let, so, me, list, let me list five. Logical and mathematical truths cannot be proven by science. Science presupposes logic and math, so that to try to prove them by science would be arguing in a circle. Uh, metaphysical truths, like there are other minds other than my own, or that the external world is real, or that the past was not created five minutes ago with an appearance of age, are rational beliefs that cannot be scientifically proven. Ethical beliefs about statements of value uh, are not accessible by the scientific method. You can't show by science whether the Nazi scientists in the camps did anything evil as opposed to the scientists in Western democracies. Aesthetic judgments, number four, cannot be accessed by the scientific method because the beautiful, like the good, cannot be scientifically proven. And finally, most remarkably, would be science itself. Science cannot be justified by the scientific method. Science is permeated with um, unprovable assumptions. For example, in the special theory of relativity, the whole theory hinges on the assumption that the speed of light is constant in a one-way direction between any two points A and B. But that strictly cannot be proven. We simply have to assume that in order to hold to the theory. Within the atheist worldview, you have to look around at everything you know, at every body you've ever known, at all of human history and all that is to come, and you have to come to the conclusion that it was all an accident, that there is no purpose for it, that we were once bacteria in the ocean, and now we are conscious living human beings with thriving societies that have the ability to send things to space, to philosophize, and all of the other incredible things that we can do. And also, as an atheist, you have to believe that we just poofed into existence out of nothing. If that is the case, then why don't things poof into existence more often. Seems like quite the leap of faith to me. So this is, this is atheism in a nutshell. You say, um, uh, there's a God. I say, can you prove that? You say, no. I say, I don't believe you then. No, actually, Ricky, if you ask a Christian if they have evidence, they won't just say no, so hold your horses. One of the things that really shocked me about Christianity when I started to look into it was that it is actually an evidence-based worldview. Let me give you three quick examples that resonate most with me. Colbert's initial question was on the right track, and he probably should have stuck to that one. It was something along the lines of the cosmological argument. Everything that comes into existence has to have a cause. The universe came into existence, so the universe has to have a cause. So what is that cause? Secondly, if there is no God, then there is no objective morality. Nothing is right, nothing is wrong, nothing is good, nothing is evil. And no atheist has ever come up with a good counter to this. And normally what they will do is they will follow the path to its logical nihilistic conclusion. Richard Dawkins famously said, the universe we observe has precisely the properties we should expect if there is, at bottom, no design, no purpose, no evil, and no good. Nothing but a blind, pitiless indifference. Sam Harris claims that we don't have free will. He says we are just basically a soup of neurons firing around and we are just dancing to the tune of our DNA. Everything is just a physical process that we ultimately have no control over. We are stardust bumping into other bits of stardust. So what does it matter what we do? But actually, we know that objective morality does exist. We all understand it inherently and we act on it 
every single day. It is objectively wrong to eat babies. And thirdly, I mean, it's not unusual to encounter somebody in today's day and age that thinks that Jesus never existed. This is how deep the rot goes. And even if they do admit that he existed, they'll say that he was just this sweet guy who walked around a few thousand years ago and had some nice lessons to teach people. But the fact of the matter is that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was a historical figure. His crucifixion is the most well-documented, widely independently attested event in ancient history. And it is indisputable that he died on that cross. And furthermore, there is a mountain of compelling evidence that he rose from the dead, thus vindicating that he was who he said he was, God incarnate. And if you think I'm crazy or stupid and you want to investigate about this more yourself, then there is a book called The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. There's also a movie made about the book and the movie is free on YouTube. So guys, to wrap it up, all this to say that there is something major happening at the moment. There is a shift in Christ consciousness happening throughout the entire Western world. And the things that I've mentioned in this video is just the tip of the iceberg. And I really do hope and believe that this is the beginning stages of some sort of a cultural renaissance where more people will wake up creating more momentum for the movement and we will move back towards Christianity.